I've been wanting one of these for such a long time. And today I get to talk to you guys about the SV14 from SV Bonnie. <laughs> So unlike binoculars, you do need something to stabilize the spotting scope. Right now I'm just using a pretty basic monopod. And uh, I'm just trying to see if we can see some birds over here. Whoops, dropping everything on the ground. Monopod works pretty well because you can sort of adjust the angle, see what you want. And if you're looking a little higher, just move it up like this. And away you go. Which of course, for me, now on a monopod, 25X works quite well. If you're gonna go to 75X, it is a little bit unstable. I would recommend going to a tripod. Um, yeah, we have a bunch of birds here because we actually have a lot of baby birds right now. I'm trying to see if I can see any of the nests that have any of the little guys poking out, but they're pretty well camouflaged in the trees here. They uh, did not make this easy. So one consideration I wanna make with this um, that I think a lot of people might oversee is that Spotting scopes are great for seeing things that are really far away, like really downrange. Like we're talking 50, 60, 70, 80 meters downrange. This guy here can only focus up to eight meters uh, away, which means for a lot of things that you're looking at, um, you're gonna use the Pat 25X to find it, and then you're gonna zoom in at 75X to sort of get that close up view. Um, I'm looking over here at some trees, and they're actually a little too close for this particular spotting scope, and I'm having to look at the next layer of trees down to sort of see all these birds flying around, which I'm almost certain are 100% grackles right now. Um, nothing's wrong with grackles, except for that they are everywhere. So I just wanted to do a little example here for you, showing you can actually take pictures uh, with your iPhone. Obviously, you want to use a cage to hold it in place, and SV Bonnie does actually sell this. I don't actually have one here with the scope, but you basically set it up like this, and you can actually focus and take a picture. And just to give you an idea of what 25X looks like, um, I have some oranges on my feeder because I was hoping for some Orioles. I haven't seen the Orioles yet, but I took a picture with this phone to give you an idea of what that looks like at 25X. Now, it is also possible to do this at 75X, but then you have to be really steady and make sure the phone is perfectly placed, which with a iPhone holder or a cell phone holder, a smartphone holder, you can do, but just handheld, uh, <laughs> we, we can give it a try and see what we end up getting. So yeah, so we got some nice, uh, there's apparently a boat going through here and uh, we got some uh, swans out here as well. Probably looking massive on this far side. That's okay. But with relative ease, I can find said swan. There we go. Bring them into focus. Wave his little tail around, there we go. That's a nice little. Yeah. Whew. There's a boat. A boat! Now, just a fair warning with this, that the photos on the phone, because it's a focal, aren't as good as the vision through here. It's gonna give a bit more fringing than normal. I'll try to show you some examples with me covering it, not covering it, to give you an idea what that is. But from a visual standpoint, this actually works really well. And as I mentioned before, if you really wanted to take pictures with the spine scope, I'd recommend removing the eyepiece entirely and putting an adapter to whatever camera you have eyepiece here which is the 2570 eyepiece and put an actual camera with the proper back focus in this place um, now i don't have that because well for me and for most people i think that if you're looking at doing photography while this does actually work very well as a telephoto lens in that capacity actually getting a regular lens might be a bit of a smarter move 
um, to fit with whatever uh, camera gear you're working with, etc. But it is an option and definitely something I will possibly look into in the future. And there we go. What makes this a really nice entry level spotting scope is that it actually has a BAK-4 optical element rather than the cheaper, less expensive BAK-7, which means that you get a wider field of view that's in focus with your telescope rather than having sort of just centered focus. Another thing I really like about this is that this uh, focusing knob has a really long throw. Now it does take time to actually go from one focus to another, but it means that you can really dial in fine focus where I've seen some where this is just too coarse, but this is very fine, it's quite good. It does have the slidable uh, sunshade, but it does whoops, have one negative effect. Um, and this is probably my big negative out of this whole scope, um, given that, you know, it is $75, is that when you push the sunshade forward, it pops the cap right off. Um, so the cap doesn't really hold the sunshades out. Not the end of the world, but just something to keep in mind if you are doing this. Another aspect to it that's kind of nice is if you unscrew this, and hopefully you can see it, it'll click and there's a spot, and there are actually several spots if you want to go like this and hold it uh, every 90 degree. So if you do have a reasoning to do that, you can actually set up the scope and do that. In terms of doing the zoom, the zoom here is 25 to 75 and it's accomplished by simply rotating the eyepiece. Oh, that probably takes the thing off the front here. There we go. When I'm looking through it, it actually looks really good. Now I will say at 25X, this is an amazing beginner scope. It gives you really good images. However, when you go up to 75, I would mark the image quality as okay. There's a little bit more chromatic abrasion. The image is obviously darker because it is just a linear scale. And overall, this is great if you absolutely need that magnification. But I would say that for most people, you're probably gonna be sitting at the 25X point on this spotting scope for about 98% of your use cases, unless again, you really need to zoom in in order to identify a bird that is of significant distance. And when I say significant distance, I'm talking about a small bird that when you're looking at a regular view, you can just sort of see it as a speck or a spot. Um, again, 25 to 75 is just an insane amount of zoom on a small spotting scope like this. So overall, I feel like the SV14 on the 70 millimeter version is a good buy. To really get up higher than this in terms of quality or whatnot, you're probably starting to talk about hundreds of dollars. And if you're just starting out doing birding or you're thinking of just buying your first birding scope, this is a great one to work with. It's waterproof, it's going to last you a long time. The build quality is quite good. Um, it does have some very nice features in order to rotate and whatever. This actually is surprisingly smooth. Um, and the field of view is actually sharp pretty much across the entire eyepiece. And again, if you want to later, you can always upgrade this to something a little bit bigger or swap it out for a camera if that is what you so desire.